your team got guaranteed money, tell them call me. Whoop. Make me say, my, my, my. I done been around the world. Yeah, I was made for this. Player performance with J.A. Cavalier. What is up, my fellow DJs? Welcome back to everyone's favorite NFL pick show. Brought to you, of course, by everyone's favorite capper. I am J.A. Cavalier. This is player performance. We're going to get into NFL Week 8. All you need to know to beat the books in just a sec. But first, let's recap Week 7 with Tessa Hall. Back it up. One more time. All right, let's see that again. Here's your NFL Recap Week 7. DeAndra Hopkins returns, and the cards put up 42. If this man offensive player of the year. The Browns can't seem to massage the kinks out of this team with another loss. The Bucks should seriously have Brady in a home. Losing to the Panthers is unacceptable. Joey Burrow returned to form, and the Falcons looked like the team we thought they'd be. Cooper Rush was benched just for Dak to throw one touchdown and a win over Detroit. The Giants are the team of destiny, stopping the Jags a yard short and winning again. Aaron Rodgers is ready to ship his whole team to Siberia after a loss to Washington. Matty Ice was so ice cold that the Colts have benched him for good after a 10-point performance against Tennessee. Someone must have set a little fire under Josh Jacobs' ass as he rushed for another three touchdowns. No Russ, even less riding. The Broncos fall yet again, this time to the Jets. Mahomes and co. reminded the Niners why they won that Super Bowl two years ago in an epic beatdown. Geno Smith might be God. The Hawks drop 37 and continue to cruise. Kenny Pickett. Kenny picked off. It writes itself. Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones are about to arm wrestle for the job in New England, thanks to an indecisive Bill Belichick. Thank you, Tessa. Yes, and of course, I wasn't upset Monday night. We did cash with the Chicago Bears. I actually said on national radio the Bears would not just cover that game. I said the Chicago Bears were going to win the game outright. Of course, they won that one on the field. Uh, cash that ticket. Listen, I'm going to get right into NFL Week 8 here. I actually wasn't going to have time to do the show, but I wanted to make sure that I got something out to you guys. I know a lot of people actually rely on this show for the weekend, so I didn't want to disappoint anyone. So here we go. Locked, loaded, ready to roll right into NFL Week 8. Cowboys versus Bears. So the Cowboys are now up to 10. The total here is down to 42 and a half. Look, the money's back in the under. I am also back in the under. The total opened up at 44, has already moved down to 42 and a half. You got to remember, everything that Dallas does successfully starts with defense. It's just nasty. It's stingy. No one's really been successful against it. Second in points allowed, teams averaging 14.9 points against this team per game. Last week, they didn't allow a touchdown to Detroit. And remember, coming into this game, Detroit had the ninth best scoring offense. I get it. Chicago put up a big game. Did they find their path? But that was against a sinking ship in New England. I was on the Bears, of course, in that game. I did say they would win the game on the field, which they did. They won the game outright. But ultimately, Chicago has the 28th ranked offense, averaging just 18 points per game. I expect Dallas to follow suit. Look, they found the recipe with Cooper. They kept it going with Dak. And it's exactly what they need to do. Keep the ball on the ground. Eat up clock. Look, Dak passed for just 207 yards last week. Chicago ranks 29th against the rush. Dallas should be able to run all over him. Keep the clock ticking. The under is 6-0 in the Cowboys' last six home games. 6-1-1 last eight games overall. Dallas has allowed 20 points or more just one time this entire season. That, of course, was to the Philadelphia Eagles. Give me the under 42 and a half. Cardinals versus Vikings. Minnesota is now down to three and a half, so the Cardinals are taking money, and the total is up as expected to 48 and a half. That's just a half a point climb. I expect this one closer to 50, maybe even 51 by game time, and I'm still back in the over here. Look, I don't care where the line is. They cannot set this total high enough to keep me off, and it's not just because Hopkins returned, although it is a big part of it. See, I like backing offenses off of a bye week. Both teams come in with rest. Minnesota, of course, off the bye week. Cardinals played last Thursday, so they get extra rest as well. Minnesota's offense is quietly averaging over 27 points a game the last four games. So Kevin O'Connell has clearly contributed more to that Rams offense. I mean, way more than anyone realized. You got to give the dude props. He's paying huge dividends in Minnesota. 
And if we bank on the Vikings scoring what they've averaged over the last four, that's 27 points per game. I trust Arizona to close the gap. They scored last week 20, uh, 42 sorry, against the Saints. D-Hop gives Kyler Murray a legit number one target. And what it really is is it's comfort. It's like Charlie Brown. You know how Linus has his blanket? That's what Hopkins is to Kyler Murray, a receiver that he truly trusts in. And look, it helps every aspect of that offense. And they were already averaging 22 points a game. So the money has bumped this line up from 48 to 48 and a half. Like I said, I'm good with this over 50, even 51. The over is 6-1 and one in the Vikings' last seven home games. Arizona's defense is absolute trash against the pass. They rank 25th, and they have to face the 10th best passing offense. Give me the over what's going to be 50-51. J.A. Cavaliers Pro Football Triple Crown. Three NFL games for this Sunday. Three straight, three two-team parlays, one week, $99. His pro football triple crown must go 3-0 and or the entire NFL season is free. J.A. Cavaliers pro football triple crown. Link in the description below. Click the link now and jump on the money train. Colts versus Commanders. Indianapolis is laying three. The total here is at 40 and a half. Listen, I'm back in the Commanders here. Taylor Heineke is an upgrade over Carson Wentz. I mean, evidence last week. And not just beating Green Bay. I think we can all agree that Green Bay is not Green Bay. It's the command, no pun intended, and the comfort of running this offense. I mean, how Indianapolis is laying three is beyond me. Indy is going to face the 13th best defense in the league while throwing a guy making his first start in the NFL. The Colts have failed to score more than 17 in three of their last four games. Their run game is supposed to be their strength. Well, it's ranked 30th in the league. Taylor's averaging just 77 yards a game. And look, I get it. It's not his fault. You can't run the ball if you can't throw the ball and vice versa. But Washington's riding a two-game winning streak. They've scored or they've covered, excuse me, in three straight. The Colts are one and three against the spread as a favorite this season. The wrong team is chalked here. Give me the better team, the better offense, the better defense, and yes, the better quarterback. I'm going to take the Washington Commanders to win this game outright. Take the Commanders' money line. They win this game on the field. Eagles versus Steelers. The Eagles are laying 10 and a half. The total here is at 43 and a half. All right, so my pick here is going to be the first half Eagles laying the six and a half. Look, Philly's six and zero against the spread in the first half this season. I'm going to back it until it burns me. Six and a half is a big number for the first half. I get it, but I have to gladly lay it in this spot. Eagles are averaging 21 points per first half this season. The Eagles tend to struggle in the second. They blew a cover to the Lions. They blew a cover to the Cardinals. Almost lost that game to the Cowboys. So I am going to take the Eagles here, but I'm going to take the Eagles early in this one. Give me the Philadelphia Eagles first half, lay the six and a half. 49ers versus Rams. So you listen to the entire show just to get to this point. Here it is, the top play. Well, actually, it's a short show, so you didn't have to listen that long. We have the 49ers laying one and a half, and the total here is set at 42 and a half. And actually, throw all that out the window, because what I am targeting here is a player prop. I never use a player prop for the top play, but I love this spot for this play. Matthew Stafford, interceptions over the .5. Look, their former OC is having success in Minnesota. We mentioned that earlier. OBJ isn't on the team. The run game is pretty much non-existent. Stafford doesn't look comfortable. I mean, it's kind of simple. To find the ball in this offense, all you have to do is find Cooper Cup. You locate Cup, you locate the ball. Wherever Cup goes, so does the ball. He's thrown eight interceptions this season. He's thrown an interception, at least one interception, in six of seven games this season. And to make matters worse, he has the most interceptions in the NFL from 2001 to this point in 2022. The Niners have six picks on defense. Two came against uh, Stafford in the first game this season. One, of course, was for a touchdown. Stafford has faced the Niners three times as QB1 of the Rams. He's thrown an interception in every single one of those games. The Niners rank second on defense against the run. So why is that important? Because that's going to force Stafford to put the ball in the air. So, of course, that raises the risk. Stafford has thrown five interceptions against San Francisco since last season. Niners have an interception on three of the last four games. 
I love the spot for this prop. Top prop, top play on the show. Matthew Stafford interceptions over the point five. J.A. Cavaliers Pro Football Triple Crown. Three NFL games for this Sunday. Three straight, three two-team parlays. One week, $99. His Pro Football Triple Crown must go 3-0 and or the entire NFL season is free. J.A. Cavaliers Pro Football Triple Crown. Link in the description below. Click the link now and jump on the money train. That's right, guys. Get to whylose.com. That's the letter Y, L-O-S-E.com. Day, week, month, season passes available all on whylose.com. That's the letter Y, L-O-S-E.com. Be sure to like and subscribe. Appreciation is always appreciated. And pick up this week's Pro Football Triple Crown. Three top plays for this Sunday. Three straight, three two-team parlays. Link in the description below. I'm sorry to give you guys such a short version of the show. I know everybody wants more. But it was either this or nothing, and I uh, I understand. You know what? I owed it to you guys to get something out there. So here it is for this week. I will make it up to you guys, of course, next week. But until then, remember that with your heads, not above them. Day, week, month, and season packages available on whylose.com. That's the letter Y, L-O-S-E dot com.